Hi everybody, I'm uh, Bogdan Pisetsky. I've been asked to talk a little bit about mother tongue, other tongue. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm a, I'm a poet and I come from Poland. So my mother tongue is Polish. I live in Birmingham these days and I've lived here for 16 years. So I kind of exist in between English and Polish and actually a third language as well, um, uh, which is French. Uh, I was born in the 80s in Poland um, uh, during martial law. And for a while, my parents thought we might need to defect to France. So they taught us French, me and my sister. Uh, so I kind of ex have always been in between languages and I've, I've always found it um, uh, natural and exciting to be able to switch between words or make horrible, horrible puns across languages um uh like uh and and then and then i moved here in um uh, to the uk and and kind of uh this just became my reality not not a choice but just something that that i lived with so i had i have two children for example um uh who, and when we sent them to nursery we 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 uh, you know uh, faced a problem that we weren't expecting um because the polish speaking amongst you know that the word die in polish means give me but obviously the english nursery staff when they saw our, uh, our tiny little uh, daughter chasing other children yelling, die, die, die at them, were understandably concerned. Um, so yeah, the living in between languages come, comes with its challenges, but I, I find it incredibly rich and um, uh, working with young poets who have more than one language uh, is really exciting too, because you get to, you get to uh, the, the advantage of having a whole other set of metaphors, a whole other way of thinking, which is what another language is. Uh, and uh, your English uh, as well is, is affected by your mother tongue or the other languages that you speak, and it becomes more unique. And I think that's what we look for in poetry. We look for someone's individual, unique perspective on the world. We, we, we look for a new and different way to see things and write about things and new and different, unique personal stories. Um, all the themes have been written about already, but what hasn't been done is, uh, is uh, using the mix of languages and experience that you personally have. So uh, for me, that is tremendously exciting and, and uh, something that I've learned to look at for myself as an advantage. When I first uh, moved to the UK, I was really self-conscious about writing in English. Um, even though I, I by then had kind of put a lot of time and effort into into quote unquote becoming a poet i'd studied poetry i'd studied poetry translation but i still felt like somehow you know i wasn't allowed because it wasn't my mother tongue and now i realize this is entirely absurd first of all who who, who is there to decide who's allowed and who isn't to make stuff um out of words and then who 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 can who can tell you which words to use um so i write uh, in uh, both my main languages now, because French, French has got a little bit pacifized, but I don't live in French, but I write in English and I write in Polish, everything ends up translated into the other language eventually. I've um, uh, had a big epiphany when I discovered that if I get blocked when trying to tell a story or I get blocked when trying to kind of write a poem and come up with a good way to speak about something, if I switch languages, very often unlocks the idea for me and and it just kind of flows out and then I can drag it back into the language I was originally trying to write in. Um, but I am also a big fan of just mixing uh, languages, German, uh, you know, some things just want to be said in Polish and they want the shit and the shit and the sibilant sounds and like they want to sound like a slightly broken radio and some things want to be in English and want to have, uh, you know, because you get access to so many single syllable words, for example, which are great for rhymes and great for going quickly and which Polish doesn't really have. Um, and, uh, and so why not just pick and choose um, the, the, you know, the, the material, <laughs> the language that serves your story best and that reflects how you live and how you think and the things you speak about uh, in one language and the things you speak about in the other. Uh, so um, that's it. If I were to, if I were to uh, ch challenge you in any way, uh, it would be to do this, to try and write in your language, which could be a mix of any number of languages and make space in your writing for them. Uh, I can guarantee you from years of experience, people, uh, uh, people will appreciate it, even if they don't get the meaning, they can get the meaning from the emotion, the melody, the rhythm of your words, even if they don't share your language. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing and a huge uh, uh, power that poetry can give us. Uh, right, so uh, that's it. Uh, that's a short introduction to me, who I am and uh, my thinking about 
mother tongues and other tongues and poetry. Since this is mother tongue and other tongue, this is a poem in my mother tongue, which is Polish, the language with which I grew up. Um, and this is a poem written by Zbigniew Herbert, uh, a poet uh, immensely famous in Poland, who has sadly now passed away. Uh, so I'll read the poem uh, in Polish. I'll read the English translation for you. Uh, and then I'll tell you just in a few words why I picked this one and why it's important to me. So here goes. Uh, in Polish, the title of the poem is Kamek. Kamyk jest stworzeniem doskonałym, równy samemu sobie, pilnujący swych granic, wypełniony dokładnie kamiennym sensem, o zapachu, który niczego nie przypomina, niczego nie płoszy, nie budzi pożądania, jego zapał i chód są słuszne i pełne godności. Czuję ciężki wyrzut, kiedy trzymam go w dłoni i ciało jego szlachetne przenika w fałszywe ciepło. Kamyki nie dają się swoić. Do końca będą na nas patrzeć okiem spokojnym, bardzo jasnym. So that's the Polish original and now the translation by Peter Dale Scott and Czesław Miłosz. Pebble. The pebble is a perfect creature, equal to itself, mindful of its limits and filled exactly with a pebbly meaning, with a scent that does not remind one of anything does not frighten anything away, does not arouse desire. Its ardor and coldness are just and full of dignity. And I feel a heavy remorse when I hold it in my hand and its noble body is permeated by false warmth. Pebbles cannot be tamed. To the end, they will look at us with a calm and very clear eye. So that's Pebble uh, by Zbigniew Herbert, and it's a poem I could not make sense of uh, when I first read it, and I was very young when I just randomly picked the book um, off the shelf. Uh, and, and it's meant different things to me at different points in my life, but just the idea that you could write so beautifully about a pebble and try so, uh, so hard to, to kind of observe it as a thing and understand its nature without trying to put uh, uh, like some kind of false meaning into it is immensely powerful to me because sometimes poetry can get taught like this weird complicated riddle and uh, you get asked what the author meant by that and you have to solve it and you kind of kind of help but ask yourself why 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 did the author not just say what they meant um but but this uh, felt like something else and it felt like something important um and like something true um, uh, and, and I was kind of vindicated when, when speaking of Herbert put together his last kind of collection of, of selected poems, he chose to close it with this, not with some of his famous um, kind of big heavy hitters, but with this poem about a pebble. Uh, so that's the one I wanted to share with you. 